Hey, how's everybody doing? <clears throat> um, we're going to try something a little different today. Normally, I, I just let the video play, but I'm going to do a voiceover for this one because there was a lot of stuff that I, need, that I needed to do and uh, that I need to cover. So what I'm doing right here, there was um, a line left down the center that just really didn't look that appealing to me. Um, so I just went in with my uh, jigsaw and cut those uh, little tabs out that, you know, kind of looked like made it look like a straight line down the center. And now I'm just using my router um, and using this little edge guide to just trim those, make those all smooth. That line was just something that had been bothering me for a while. Every time I would look at the table, because um, I had it sitting in my living room, I'd see that line and it just you know, really made everything look unnatural, so I wanted to remove it. Now that I've, I've got all that smoothed out, I'm just coming back with that 45 degree chamfer bit, putting that same chamfer um, that I put on the, the piece originally. Right, here I'm putting a 45 degree chamfer all around the edge. Um, uh, the, the top edge got this, and then the outside of all the legs got this. Alright, now I'm coming back in here. This is a, uh, I think it was a 22 and a half degree router bit, and I'm putting a chamfer on all the inside faces of the legs. Just kind of wanted to break up that sharp edge and just add a little more style to it without anything being too overpowering. I'm just putting a 45 degree chamfer on the bottom of the feet just to keep those edges from chipping out. Alright, I'm just sanding these by hand. Um, I tried a couple different methods. I used these uh, um, Scotch Brite balls and I just wasn't really getting the results that I wanted. They weren't really working out that well. Um, they couldn't really get in the, the tight corners. So. I ended up just doing this all by hand. So if you've been following this build, um, you're probably wondering why I'm pouring epoxy on it because I swore up and down the whole time that I wasn't going to do that. Um, but after thinking about it a lot, I decided that that would probably uh, be a pretty cool effect. So here I'm just getting the bottom ready to attach a piece of melanine. And this was where I made my first mistake. Um, I didn't cover the melanine with Tyvek tape. And uh, you'll see later why that was such a big problem. I'm just using some cheap caulk to 
to hold it down. And I'm just putting a bunch of clamps on it to weigh everything down and hold it while it dries. So the caulk alone seemed like it was holding it pretty good, but um, I just wanted to add a few clamps. In this shot here, you can see my outfeed table um, that I just folded up. Um, I don't have a ton of workspace, so I've been working on this one. I need to still cut the miter slots into it. All these clamps might have been a little overkill, but I just really wanted to ensure that I didn't end up with a bunch of epoxy on the floor. All right, so now I start filling. And uh, this was my second mistake here. Um, it was super hot in my garage. If you see my shirt, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm just filling it about a quarter of an inch for, for most of them. And I wanted this to be pretty translucent. So my idea was originally to come through with just clear epoxy, um, fill it up about halfway, and then start doing my different shades of blue. So I come through with the torch after and just pop any bubbles. Um, so some of these holes actually got a little overfilled, um, probably about three quarters of the way full. And you can see some of them are yellow. Those are the ones that got a little overfilled and they got so hot that it just yellowed the epoxy. But I figured since I was going with different shades of blue anyways, it'd be, it, it shouldn't really matter. It would just you know, kind of add a little extra color to it. So I kept going on. All right, and again, it was super hot. Um, so you can kind of see some bubbles here. And what happened was I uh, used a torch to pop the bubbles and then some more came up and I was gonna come back and pop those. By the time I got back to it, the uh, reaction had already kicked off. So all I'm doing is just sm smoothing everything out, um, pretty much sanding everything down so it's at least level with the top surface of the wood. And then I'm going to come back in with a, a multi-tool and a little sander and just gouge out some of the higher areas um, and some of the areas around the edges. That's what I'm doing right here. This certainly wasn't part of the plan, but it did end up making it look pretty cool in the end. So I guess everything ends up working out. But, uh, you know, this certainly wasn't the right way to do everything. And, uh... All right, so here's uh, what I was talking about with the mistake that I made of, of the uh, not using that Tyvek tape. So this piece on the back just would absolutely not come off. Um, you know, I tried prying it and it, it just wasn't coming. So I ended up trying to cut into it using my grinder, using, um, Fossner bits and, uh, again, using the multi-tool and this worked a little bit here, but the thing that really ended up doing it was I just ended up using my router and you'll see that in a minute here. I don't show too much of this cause it's, it's, was pretty tedious, but, um, you know, I just came through with the router and cut everything out. Um, when I did finally get get all that off, I just sanded it smooth, and then I put another layer of 
um, fresh, just clear epoxy on it just to smooth everything out. So now I'm back to adding the, the colored epoxy to the top. Um, I'm not really using any great brand. It's uh, Famo Wood um, from Lowe's. It's just something I can get easily local. So again, every time I, I you know, put some down, I come back through with the uh, torch and just pop the bubbles. You can see here how I'm getting the different shades of blue. All right, so now I come through with my belt sander and just level this whole thing down. Um, I'm bringing everything down to level with the uh, top surface of the wood. That's a pretty heavy grit on there. I think it was like an 80 grit. Now I'm coming back through with my sander. Um, I think I'm starting with 80 grit on here and I'll work down to uh, 120 and then 220, I think. All right, and here I'm just coming through with this mixture that I, I make of uh, linseed oil and uh, um, oil-based polyurethane, and, and I'm just getting it on there just to stain the wood um, and seal that. And um, then I just come through and wipe it right off, and uh, it comes right off the epoxy. Now I'm just coming through with uh, the final coat of epoxy. That's a pretty thin layer that I'm just brushing on. Pop the bubbles again. All right, and that was uh, the last time we poured epoxy on this. So now I'm just coming through and sanding. I start with um, 220 grit, work my way up 320, 400. 600, 800, and then finally a thousand. I didn't want this thing to be a mere finish. I wanted, um, you know, kind of a, a satin finish, but just something that was smooth and, and looked nice. So I come through and sand this all down and then uh, buff it out just using some uh, buffing compound. And then after that, I'm going to come through with uh, paste wax and just buff the top with the wax on there. That's what I'm doing right here. And that gave me exactly the finish that I wanted. Now this thing fought me the whole way and uh, kept fighting me up until the end. I just dumped my whole thing of uh, finish all over the place, but that's okay. All right, thanks for sticking around. Um, I hope you learned a lot. I definitely learned a lot. Um, I've never done a really big epoxy pour like that, so that was an exp a new experience for me. Um, if uh, this helped you out, please like and subscribe. I do a lot of videos with my CNC machine, but I'm also going to start doing a lot more videos on more conventional woodworking. So, again, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for supporting the channel.